But the most important question is, why the big hurry? Why, why are they you know, moving technology forward in order to get out of this planet? This brings us up to the conclusion as to why they'd be uh, moving so fast. There are many theories I want to share with you, but one of the first one involves a thing that is known colloquially as the photonic energy band or the photon belt that's meant to be coming uh, about December 21st, 2012, as the Mayan calendar predicts. That at that time, our solar system and all of its planets move through a band of highly ionized, highly photonic energy, which has severe consequences for anyone who's toxic. Because light has certain spiritual principles, and photons are the highest form of light that we know physically. Mother Nature knows how to clean herself. There's a spin-dry cycle coming from the, for the planet and, and the solar system. Get ready. The photon of uh, Robert Stanley says that uh, he reported on the discovery of the photon band by satellite in 1991. He says the ex uh, Barbara Han Clow actually talks about it in her Pleiadian agenda. She says that the excesses of photons are being emitted from the center of our galaxy. Our solar system enters this, the area of our galaxy every 11,000 years and then passes through for 2,000 years while completing its 26,000 year galactic orbit. We read that uh, the photon effect is caused by the precession of our solar system and its accompanying planets around the central sun called Alcyon. This counterclockwise cyclic uh, precession around Alcyon requires about 26,000 years to make one complete orbit. Our present day sun, moon and planets must twice pass through the photon belt during this time. That is, once to the north and once to the south. During this cycle there are two periods of darkness and two periods of light. The periods of darkness, which constitute the vast majority of that rotation, consist of two periods of about 11,000 years. Followed, following each period of 11,000 years or so of darkness, we then emerge into 2,000 years of total light, which actually constitutes the photon belt. So at the nor what they're saying is that the north and southern points of that great orbit are two, you see, um, periods of 2,000 years where the whole of our solar system passes through that. It's, 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 what it is is literally the roach cleaner on his way. Right? Or in, in, in a year, doesn't nature go through her spin-dry cycle? <laughs> it's the same way up the fractal. It's the same way up the Fibonacci series. The photon belt was discovered in 61 by satellite-borne instruments. Uh, it comes around every 10,000 years or so. I mean, the, all these points can be debated, by the way. There's a lot of debate on this, but this is just the basics. Earth is thought to have entered the outer perimeter already. The sun's radiation, they say, will be, well, of course, it's the biggest light source of our solar system, so, of course, photonic energy, definitely going to affect it. Electrons will be affected. Everything you, around you is, is made of them. And this will generate photonic radiation. If the sun enters the belt first, it will disappear and, the sun will, and darkness will ensue. That's the famous three days of darkness. If the Earth does, then the entire sky will appear to be on fire. All things will emit light and phosphorescence. Darkness will not exist. And there are some people are even speculating that it will affect our DNA. Deepak Chopra says that photons come out of nowhere. They cannot be stored. They can barely be pinned down in time. And they have no home in space whatsoever. That is, light occupies no volume and has no mass. The similarity between a thought, and this is interesting, the similarity between a thought and a photon is very deep. Both are born in the region beyond space and time where nature controls all processes in that void, which is full of creative intelligence. So it's connected. Light and thought are connected. Jeremy Narbury, talking about the biophotonic action, says, In the early 1980s, thanks to the development of a sophisticated measurement device, a team of scientists demonstrated that the cells of all living beings emit photons at a rate of up to approximately 100 units per second per square centimeter of surface area. They also showed that DNA well, literally was the source of that photonic emission. So photon band equals changes in your DNA. Whatever the changes are, it doesn't concern me that much. But I just want to know there's a link. Well, hasn't the mythologies and the religions been telling us that anyway? That you are the temple of God, the sun of the, sun of the universe is inside you, you're the intelligence? So we have the photon band concept. But there's something else that needs to be understood. Constellational alignments. In my DVD 2012, that's what this deals with. Because there's other things that you need to know about concerning this, because that might happen very soon, from 2007 onwards, in fact. 
And the most famous one of those, of course, is the Maya date of 2012 and the so-called age of revealing. You can't think about the 2012 date without thinking of what the Maya called their last 13-year countdown. Well, that last 13-year countdown obviously started in 1999. The exact midway point of that was November 8, 2003. Well, we're already way past that. We're already, halfway, we're already past the halfway date of the last countdown of 13 years. That is why we're going to be seeing those changes very, very rapidly. And it also makes sense for all the saber rattling and the moral, political, economic climate that we're seeing right now. The Mayas called it the age of revealing. At sunrise on December 21st, 2012, for the first time in 26,000 years, the sun rises to conjunct the intersection of the Milky Way and the plane of the ecliptic. Okay, this is astrological jargon. If you're not familiar, just bear with us. This cosmic cross is considered to be an embodiment of the sacred tree, the tree of life, a tree remembered in all the world's spiritual traditions. Some observers say this alignment with the heart of the galaxy in 2012 will open a channel for cosmic energy to flow through the earth, cleansing it and all that dwells upon it, raising it all to a higher level of vibration. In 2012, the plane of the solar system will line up exactly with the plane of our galaxy, the Milky Way. This cycle has taken 26,000 years to complete. The alignment was recorded by the Maya, whose calendar was said to arise from a phenomena referred to as the sacred tree. Is it any accident that the greatest humanitarians who have walked very close to humanity and who have loved us and tried to teach us this, all of this methodology and this message of psychic cleaning and the great Armageddon, that their movies should come back into vogue exactly after these periods, at the, at the equinoxes and the solstices of the world? Is there any accident why those movies work on many levels? And how many secrets we're being told there about the great Armageddon and the fighting between the forces of light and darkness? One of the most other important events, which even precedes the 2012 date is the coming of the planet Pluto across into the galactic center, astrologically. Pluto, the planet of destruction, or if you prefer, deconstruction, and radical change will be crossing galactic center and channeling that energy from the central sun. All planets are like little lenses, right? It's not so much that the planet generates energy itself, it channels energy from what is known as galactic center, where all the spiritual energy comes. And the planets that move in front of that locus focus cosmic energy in different ways, just like you put different filters in front of the, the, the lights. Mercury has just been crossing the meridian. When Pluto crosses the meridian, and Pluto is the channeler for the galactic center's energy, you're going to feel it. All right? You don't feel the sun so much, and you don't feel the Mercury and the smaller planets. You're going to feel this. It takes about 250 years for Pluto to complete one circuit of the zodiac, or 12 signs. Pluto is presently approximately about 24 degrees of Sagittarius. When it moves into Capricorn, the sign of order and government, it brings cataclysmic upheavals and exposure of all corruption in order to restore harmony and a higher way of being. The individual lives will be dramatically transformed. Pluto brings in deep cleansing cycle to the psyche of human beings. From Robert Hand, the great philosopher, um, excuse me, the great astrologer, he says the nature of Pluto is similar to that of the Hindu god Shiva. Pluto usually brings, begins by bring, breaking down a structure, then creates a new one in its place. The entire cycle of death, destruction, and renovation is accompanied by tremendous powers, for Pluto is not a mild or even very subtle planetary influence. It brings decay at one level or another. It also rules the death and regeneration of the self as old aspects of your life pass away. Pluto does not represent death in the literal sense. Instead, it refers to a metaphorical death, something that just ceases to be. Well, that entity, that compulsion within the psyche that the planets represent, is moving into prime position 